In this video, I will be introducing the ethnobotany calendar, course structure, syllabus, some of the expectations, and the course navigation along with the apps being used in the course. The apps can be seen here in the second row of my desktop. I'll be using the Schoology app, the iNaturalist app, the YouTube app, and the InShot app, and at the bottom of my desktop, the browser, the Chrome browser app. First, we'll be to try to find the course in cyberspace. To find this course in cyberspace, the easiest way is to simply enter my name into a Google search, as seen there. Press Enter and look for course pages for Dana Leeling. Click on that and that will take you to my course's home page. The large lettered SCSS115 Ethnobotany, that actually is a link to the calendar, course structure, and syllabus. Here we can see the calendar. The calendar is organized Tuesday, Thursday, just to give you an idea of pacing for the course. Uh, and to give you some idea of when you might want to do a particular uh, uh, reading or a particular video or when an assignment is due. But you can work on, on material in the course in any day of the week. The weeks run down the middle of the page, week one, two, three, four, five, and so they give you an idea of what we're doing and when we're doing it. The syllabus and calendar here are interactive. That is, if I tap on the one, I go to chapter one of the textbook. If I tap on the Ethnobotany 001, it will take me to the video that introduces the course. These play icons all lead to videos for that particular day that explain the activity on that day. This syllabus is still under the development. The videos are still being produced at the time of the making of this particular video. So this video, this uh, syllabus can be expected to be altered, changed, and modified as time passes. The course structure uh, is also here, and you can take a look at that. The course structure, including the botanic side of the course, uh, the botanic science side, and the ethnographic science side of the course. And the numbers refer to the chapters, so chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter 2, 3, etc., 4, 5, 6. Those are the chapters up to chapter 10. Chapter 10 is as far as it goes. The numbers after the chapter number often refer to uh, codes I use to help keep videos uh, in sequence and in order but the second digit matches the chapter number. The third digit is simply a, a arbitrary number to sequence my videos. You do need a smartphone to use to access uh, this course and to accomplish this course. A laptop is optional, but a smartphone is necessary in order to take pictures of plants for iNaturalist uh, that have a GPS location iNaturalist will need a good picture of the plant, or pictures, and a GPS location. The course, starting in the second week, will have roughly weekly assignments. And as covered in other videos, you will be, during the, during the whole term, you'll have plenty of time to work on this. You'll be producing four videos that you will upload to YouTube, and that's why the YouTube app is useful. And you'll have to make uh, 14 specific iNaturalist observations and submit those to iNaturalist. Videos will be submitted via YouTube because that's really the only way you'll be able to get that video uploaded on the low bandwidth that many of us face here in Micronesia. Uh, I will also be covering in later videos the video editing software such as InShot that we can use to reduce the file size to make it easier to upload a video. If you upload straight from your phone, that may or may not be possible. Those files are quite large. But with a video editing application, such as InShot or other video editors, 
we can reduce that file size and make it easier to get that uploaded and submitted. So videos are submitted by YouTube and uh, in a moment I'll show you how the iNaturalist uh, observations are submitted in iNaturalist. Grades will be recorded back in Schoology. If you need to get a hold of me at any time during the term, you can reach me via email as seen here in the syllabus. We can set up a Zoom meeting if necessary. You can also send me messages through Schoology. There are links to the applications used in this course. If you want to uh, have a link to get to the app for Android or Apple iOS, all of the uh, apps I'm using are available for both Android and Apple. The textbook is online. We just saw chapter one a little earlier. It's Micronesian Ethnobotany. The textbook is one single page. All of the chapters are on one page. So once you load it, as long as you don't close this tab that you're on, you can carry this book around with you even when you're not online. The book is designed to be used offline. You'll have to be online to load it the first time, but once it's loaded, you can carry it around with you. There is also what's called a flora. A flora is just a list of the plants of a place, but this flora includes the scientific name, a picture of the plant, and some of the local names of a particular plant. So uh, you can see if what the name is for some of the plants. Here, this particular large fern of the forest has names in Koshai, Pompeii, and Yap. Now, the names were provided by students in earlier editions of the class, and it is possible that some of them have, some plants have other names that aren't listed, or there's always a possibility that uh, this, the name is simply not correct. If you see an incorrect name, let me know. But we have lists of some of the names of some of the plants that are found on some of our different islands in the flora. And that's what a flora is. It's a list of plants for a particular place or island. That's also linked here, and it's linked in a few other places. There is a playlist for all of the ethnobotany videos. If you wish to, uh, for some reason, get at the whole list of all videos, all videos will be listed in the ethnobotany playlist. Well, that's a look at the syllabus, course structure, and calendar. I do want to now turn my attention to some of the apps, starting with the iNaturalist app. In iNaturalist, you'll be making plant observations. One like this one. I will be asking that you take a good, clear picture or pictures of the plant. We like to see the leaves. We like to see the flowers. If there's a fruit, we like to see the fruit. It helps us identify the plant. In this case, I took a picture of the top and the bottom of the leaf. For some plants, the bottom of the leaf is also important in identifying the plant. The same for flowers. Sometimes the bottom of the flower is just as important as the top of the flower. It varies from plant to plant. And I'll be talking about that in later videos. And down in my notes, under description, I included a Pompeian name for this because it does have a name here on Pompeii. And I included a local use. I noted it's local medicine. I can't be more specific because I do not know the specific use of this plant as a medicine, but it is used as a medicine plant here, so I've noted that. You can do the same when you upload your plant. Add a local name, add a local use. Um, and that's what distinguishes this as an ethnobotanical observation. To submit this plant, all you have to do is click in the upper right corner of the picture, at least in Android, iOS may be different, and click on Share, and then you can email the, uh, the observation to me. You can share via email. It may be possible to share via Schoology, I haven't actually had the opportunity to try using that capability, and I'm not sure if it will work. But I do know that you can share it by email. And so on that first assignment, which is to submit a picture of a wild plant, 
uh, I'll be asking that you share that to me uh, via Gmail. That will be my recommendation, at least, would be to share it to me via Gmail. So that's in that corner, and you'll need to use that. to. That's how you will submit, and then your grade will appear back in Schoology. I'll next just take a, a brief look at uh, InShot. I'm going to skip past the YouTube app. I'm assuming you have the YouTube app. It has a little icon for uploading videos. But I'm just a quick look at the InShot app. In InShot, and you can use other video editors, but a lot of what we'll be doing is just simply picking up a video, maybe some short video on a plant of some sort, uh, not something too terribly necessarily uh, long, but some. I pull up this plant video, and what we'll be using it for primarily. You can edit from it. You can explore the app and edit, and uh, uh, if you need to add some words to the top, you can do that. You can add words to the top. But our primary use will be simply to be able to save this at 720p. So by saving at, at 720p, it'll reduce the file size. Now I will note that InShot is free, but supported by ads. You just saw one of the ads. Uh, that's the way things work on the Android world. When you use something free, you'll see ads. Uh, and uh, just ignore the ads. But the 720p will let that file size be shrunk down and make it much faster to upload, reducing the upload time by a factor of 8 to 10. So uh, I do recommend that you use InShot to uh, reduce your file sizes for upload on your videos. And then you'll send me the video link and that's how you'll submit that particular assignment. Again, if you have questions, you can email me. You can send me messages from the school. Messages can be sent from here in the Schoology app. Uh, you just simply press plus, send a new message to me. Uh, and uh, you can also get at the course information from here. All those submissions, again, will generally be outside. But the tests will be in Schoology. Tests will be here inside Schoology. So if you have questions, do let me know.